the Johnson Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Let's Break the Ice. who has a very nice home and does her own work. Somehow or other, the conversation, as you might expect, happened to swing around to glow coat. You know, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. I'll tell you what I like best about glow coat, my friend said. Of course, I know that it saves me hours of work because it's self-polishing. But what pleases me most is that it keeps my kitchen so cheerful, and I hate to have to get dinner in a gloomy kitchen. Well, there you are. One very good reason for using glow coat on your kitchen floor. It makes it more cheerful. Keeps the colors of the linoleum fresh and bright. Keeps the floor sparkling with a beautiful, long-lasting polish. Protects the linoleum itself from wear. Makes it last longer. And all this in addition to the fact that glow coat, because it needs no rubbing or buffing, saves you the work of floor scrubbing. So, I ask you, do you have Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on your linoleum floor? When a man enters this world, his clothes don't mean much to him as long as they're comfortable and there are no pins sticking into him. When he grows up, though, style becomes pretty important. And finally, he gets over that and completes the cycle by throwing style out the window and demanding comfort again. Which roughly is the subject for discussion at 79 Wistful Vista between Silver McGee and Molly. And furthermore, Molly, what's the matter with this suit? Except maybe it needs a little pressing. A little pressing? Yeah. Look at the knees of those pants. Well. They look like you've been smuggling cantaloupes in them. <laughs> well, I never claimed to be no dude. I dress for comfort. I can't wear spats and a cutaway coat and a when will we two meet again collar when I gotta run down and fix the furnace every couple of hours. Well, that's not the point. Look at Mr. Gildersleeve. Look at Mr. Wilcox. Look at Uncle Dennis. Oh. They always manage to look well dressed. Ah, they're a bunch of featherheads. All they think of is clothes. They can have the pleats. Give me the wrinkles. <laughs> Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. What's on your mind? Hmm? Uh, I says, what you want? What was the underlying purpose of this unexpected intrusion into our domestic tranquility? <laughs> you want to know what I came in for? Hmm. <laughs> now you're cooking with gas, sis. <laughs> yes, what you want? Well, i just gone into business, mister. Oh, you have, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always glad to see a tyke turn into a tycoon. <laughs> What's your biz, sis? <laughs> Muscled into the Valentine racket, Mister, and gee, I got a swell line of stuff too. I bet you. Well, well, never let it be said that Pippin McGee was deaf to the plaintive cry of sentiment. Though you might be wasting your time, sis. Mrs. McGee is the only one I'd send a Valentine to. Oh no, she is. Oh yes, she is. Oh no, she is. Oh yes, she is. Oh no, she is. Oh well, who else would I be sending a Valentine to? Mister Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve. Yes. He's going to send you one, I bet you. What? A 25 cent or two. He is? Mm -hmm. Honest? Gee, I'm glad you told me, sis. Well, I ain't going to be outdone in neighborliness and friendship. I'll send him one. You got any that cost 50 cents? Yeah, here's one right here. Hmm. Look at all the pretty lace on it, too. Oh, that ought to be great for Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> How does the verse read, sis? It says, quote, Mm-hmm. When the river of life is dark and muddy, I'll still have you, my pal and buddy. Unquote. <laughs> <laughs> I got an awful cold tonight, Mr. Yes, yes. That's funny. I don't feel anything at all. 
Well, that's a pretty sweet valentine, all right. Old Gildersleeve is my pal and buddy, too. Why, surely. In spite of the fact that we have our little squabbles. Hmm, have you? Have I what? Hmm? I says, have I what? Have you got little squabbles, hmm, have you? <laughs> well, I sure don't, everybody. No. Hmm? My papa said to raise squabs once, but he never got me little squabbles. <laughs> Well, let's skip the ornithology and stick to humanity, sis. I'll take this valentine. All righty, here you are, mister. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yes. And I hope Mr. Gillisley doesn't feel bad because his wasn't as pretty as yours. Oh, well, never mind that. It's the sentiment that counts, sis. What does his say, by the way? It says, quote, uh-huh. If there's one thing I abhor, it's that nasty little boy, that shrimp who works me to the core, uh-huh. the little squirt who lives next door. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Old shrimp that lives next door, eh? I'll fix that. What were we talking about, Molly? When... Well, we were talking about your appearance. Oh, yes, my appearance. Well, it's so discouraging. Discouraging? Again. When I think how dapper you looked when we were married, you with your fancy vest and your pointed toes, and your hat turned up in front and all. <laughs> Remember that yellow top coat I had with the black velvet collar? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Ah, that was pretty hot stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and that long ivory cigarette holder you carry? Yeah. <laughs> Them sweet caprols. <laughs> ah, dear. And hailed every puff, too. <laughs> ah, my, now you just don't seem to care. Of course, you haven't got the athletic build you used to have. I then. have, too. I got a better build now than I had then. I'm, I'm more filled out more. <laughs> Where? Well, never mind. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could make Wilcox and Gildersleeve and Uncle Dennis look like a bunch of old Okies. Oh, go on. Chuck, take away them open work shoes and padded shoulders of theirs, and what would you have left? Three sneers from the draft board. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't give me that, McGee. Why, you should have heard what the tailor said when I took your other suit out to be mended again. What'd he say? Again? <laughs> well, I told you, Molly, that suit was too old to be mended. I asked you to give it to the Salvation Army. I did. And they sent it back. <laughs> sent it back with a basket of groceries. <laughs> ah, well, I guess I'll spend the rest of our married life here and people make unkind remarks about that careless old man, Fibber McGee. That's right, I ain't old and I ain't careless. Why, of course you're not, dearie. Oh. You just like to be comfortable, that's all. You betcha. Personally, I love you with your elbows all shiny and your... Trouser cup sprayed like that. Oh, well. What if you do bulge in the wrong places? <laughs> I do not bulge in the wrong places. Here, look at this chest expansion. <laughs> what was that? I busted my belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I needed a new one anyway. Well, why didn't you go downtown and get one now? Oh. Maybe you could get a new suit to go with it, huh? Well, I might at that. Come to think of it, I will. I'll go get a whole new outfit right now. I'll, I'll get a flock of duds that'll make Gildersleeve and Wilcox and Uncle Dennis look like hitchhikers on Tobacco Road. Uh, good Why, when I make up my mind... Come in. Hello there, driver. Hello, Johnny. Hi, old-timer. I'm the new milkman. Want any milk today? <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Old-timer. We're going out and we'll uh, probably eat downtown. And believe me, old-timer, when I get back, I'll look like a page out of Esquire. I mean pretty, not petty. <laughs> Pretty good, Johnny. Yeah. But that ain't the way I heard it. Uh, the way I heard it, one fella says, the other fella says, hey, he says, how come you've been stepping out with that Eskimo nurse maid for six months? Well, says the other fella, this is her night out. <laughs> don't you get it? <laughs> well, sure you don't want any milk today, kid? <laughs> no, thank you, old timer. No, okay. Come on, Elsie. Watch them steps now.
wait a minute, Molly. Before we go inside the store, let's, let's look in the window here a minute. All right. Let's see what the well-dressed dummy is wearing this spring. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> Did you think there was? Well, I'd hope there was. <laughs> I always wanted to cultivate the air that a clothing store dummy has got. Kind of nonchalant and supercilious and haughty and all stuff like that there. <laughs> <laughs> Takes six generations of money in the family to achieve an expression like that. <laughs> yes, it's strange how often a vacant face goes with a full pocket. <laughs> Which ought to give you a very expressive countenance, dearie. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, look at that silly-looking suit there. Third from the left. <laughs> it's Chevrolet, ain't it? No, you mean Cheviot. I do not. Cheviot means Russian. Like in the Cheviot government. <laughs> That's Soviet. Oh, no, no. You're thinking of Serviet, ain't you? No, no. A Serviet is a napkin. It couldn't be. Russians don't use napkins. <laughs> they grow beards instead. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to say. You'll have a beard down to here before I let you buy a suit like that. No, I didn't want it anyway. Personally, I go for that outfit in the middle there. The one with the green tweed coat and the yellow sweater and the fawn-colored pants. Oh, my. I've seen a photo of Bob Hope wearing a combination like that. Well, that's different. Bob Hope is a successful actor. Oh, what's he got that I haven't got? Two things. Huh? He's successful and he's an actor. <laughs> well, shut the pizza. Uh-oh, let's get inside quick. Here comes Mrs. Uppington. Too late. She sees it. Huh? Oh, and speaking yeah. of clothes, McGee, take a good look at her. Yeah. Fur coat by Bergdorf Goodman, <laughs> shoes by I. Miller, and a face by a cross-eyed sculptor with a hiccup. <laughs> well, you can't begrudge an old war horse a new harness, but... <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? So nice to see you. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? And Mr. McGee. Oh, hi, Uppy. We were just commenting on how lovely you look today, Abigail. Yeah. New coat, Uppy? Yes, baby lamb. Oh, really? Cutie pie? <laughs> <laughs> she means the coat is baby lamb. Oh, well, speaking of clothes, Uppy, I'm down here to get me a new outfit myself today, myself. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, if you're referring to this suit I got on, Uppy, I admit it looks a little tired. But when I bought it, it was pretty snappy. Yes, sir. It, it was the first English group in town. <laughs> English drip. English drape. Oh, droop, drip, drape, let's drop it. <laughs> but I should imagine you'd be a very difficult person to fit, Miss McGee. What do you mean, Abigail? Well, I mean, Miss McGee, that, that you would be high, wide, and handsome if you were a little higher and a little handsomer. <laughs> He is a little wide, isn't he, Abigail? It's a sleeper jump between his handkerchief and his wallet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You girls go right on and have fun at my expense. <laughs> oh, please don't take it seriously, Mr. McGee. In fact, I was defending your appearance to a group of ladies at the club just this morning. Oh, that was sweet of you, Abigail. What did they say? Oh, they said something about Mr. McGee always looking like a scarecrow. Oh, yeah, well, I'll have... Oh, 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 but I immediately rushed to your defense, Mr. McGee. You did? Yes, I did. I said, indeed. And why should he not look like a scarecrow? Huh? He has to do something to protect all that corn. Well, goodbye. Protect all that corn. Well, I'll... Did you hear that old turtle, Dove? <laughs> what does she know about style? Why, Molly, you look better in a kitchen apron than she does dressed up for the governor's ball. Ah, but you're wrong, dearie. When it comes to putting on the Waldorf, I can't hold a candle to her. Much as I would like to if it was lit. <laughs> now, come on in and let's get you some clothes. Hey, boy, this is a pretty doggy place, isn't it, Molly? Yes, but now don't you forget you're used to walking upstairs and saving $10. Yeah. This is the first time you ever bought a suit at sea level. Yes, sir. <laughs> have uh, you been waited on, sir? Oh, hi, bud. Now, let me see something in a snappy suit of clothes. Yes, sir. Just have a chair, sir, and I'll oh. show you some samples. Have a cigarette, sir? Oh, thanks, bud. Would uh, Madame care for tea? Oh, yes, I would, and a ham on rye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Madame is very amusing. Uh, now then, sir, just uh, what sort of a suit did you have in mind? Uh, would you like something in a sack? <laughs> now, you better put it in a box, bud. It's liable to get all wrinkled in a sack. <laughs> oh, so. No, sir, I meant, uh, what style? Uh, what was the, uh, the purpose of this suit? What's the purpose of any suit? To keep you from getting pinched, ain't it? <laughs> Come on, Ty, si, quit stalling. Uh, suppose we approach this problem from another angle, sir. Did you have any particular material in mind? <laughs> yeah, cloth. You... <laughs> Oh, McGee, you're a liar. 
I kill me, too. <laughs> oh, I'd love to shop with you. <laughs> ah, joking aside, Chauncey. Yes. <laughs> what material do you think would fit my personality best? Uh, do you care for this herringbone material? It drapes beautifully, oh, and... Oh, uh... that's a lovely suit, Mr. Boy. Must be very expensive, though. Yeah, think how many little herrings must have gone into a yard of that... <laughs> how much is that there suit there, bud? Well, see, that suit is about... Oh, uh, there, just a moment, my handsome young tailor. And I don't mean Robert. Oh, good oh. day, Mr. Boomer. Hello, Mr. Boomer. Good day, my dear. And a tittering Tuesday to you, titmouse. <laughs> Hi, Boomer. If you'll permit me to interrupt for one moment... I have a complaint to register in this emporium. Oh, certainly, Mr. Boomer. We're in no hurry. What's the matter, Horatio? Buy a shark skin suit and discover they gypped you out of a fin? <laughs> <laughs> it was gabardine, Gabby. And at the next tone signal, it will indicate that I have converted your primitive skull into a Chinese gong. <laughs> was that complaint in reference to that suit you're wearing, Mr. Boomer? Certainly was, Watchbox. Now, let me see. Complaint, complaint. Now, where did I put that complaint? Here's a short length of lead pipe I took away from a girlfriend last night. <laughs> Stunning creature. <laughs> Postcard from Sheila the shoplifter. Says she's in jail with the measles. Yes, yes. I knew she'd be spotted sooner or later. <laughs> and the checks were short bare. Seems to have been a very brief routine, don't you think? <laughs> I wonder what... Ah, yes, that was my complaint. Not enough pockets. <laughs> I'll send this suit back tomorrow. Good day, gentlemen, and to you, fragile, fresh, and fragrant. <laughs> well, uh, but, uh, how much did you say this herringbone suit is? $125, including alterations. Oh, including alterations. Well, uh, how much without the alterations? $42.50. Oh. <laughs> Well, we'll take it, and I'll make the alterations yourself. You make the alterations? You can. Why, oh, sure. Oh, okay, wrap it up, bud. And make it snappy. i got to go buy a hat. You can get a hat in our haberdashery department, sir, right through the archway. Okay, thanks. Ah, you know, Molly, I took a shine to that suit the minute I set eyes on it. What was that, Fever? You took a shine to what? Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. I should have known better than to use that word, shine. <laughs> <laughs> Wilcox, you grab it a cue like a Chinese barber. <laughs> McGee just got himself a new suit, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah. From now on, Harlow, you can be the second best-dressed man in Whistle Vista. <laughs> well, being well-dressed is a matter of business with me, chum. I can't go in dressed like a bum and talk to dealers about a high-class product like ours. How come why? Why? <laughs> Everybody knows that Johnson's Wax is the finest protection for floors and furniture that money can buy. And I'd be pretty silly to interview a dealer or a wholesaler with the back of my blue serge pants looking like a personal demonstration, wouldn't I? <laughs> But look, if you want my advice about clothes, Fibber... I don't. You don't? No, I don't. I forgot more about clothes than you'll ever know, Wilcox. Oh, no, Mr. Well, I have. Don't. Why, back in Peoria, I become so well-known as a style setter that I still get letters now and then addressed to Fibber McGee, Esquire. <laughs> yes, but in buying clothes now... Why, when I walked into a clothing store and slipped into a coat, the salesman would just about just stand there and just stand there and glow. Glow Coat McGee, I was known as. Oh, my. Glow Coat McGee, greeted from Gotham to the Golden Gate as the gaudy Galahad of the Giddy Get Up, getting the gals goo goo and gaga with my glorious gravy gray gabardines, gossamer galoshes, and garish garters garnished with gleaming garnet geegaws, graceful and gay and green and grenadine, and getting the goat to guys like Gable with the glittering grandeur of my golf and garments. A gorgeous Goliath, you'd know at a glance, was Glow Coat McGee in his gunny sack hand. <laughs> The King's Men sing Clementine. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine, dwell the miner, 49er, and his daughter, Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine, you are lost and gone forever, very sorry, Clementine. She was light and like a fairy, and her boots were number nine, packing cases, strung with laces, were the shoes for Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine, you are lost and gone forever. Very sorry, Clementine. Oh, she was driving little ducks to water on the steeple clock of strike and nine. When she caught her foot and stumbled on a root and tumbled down into the brine. Oh, 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 my darling, oh, my pretty little darling. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine. You are lost and gone forever. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. Her ruby lips are born. Now she's 
married to the Fisher boy. That's how I lost my Clementine. Oh, 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 my darling, oh, my pretty little darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. I knew I lost you, lost to me, and gone forever, gone forever. Dreadful sorry, dreadful sorry, Clementine. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. You wish to see something in a hat, sir? But I wish to be something in a hat. <laughs> Show me the best boiler you got. Yes, sir. What size do you wear? Well, he takes a six and seven eighths with a haircut, seven and a half for the other 50 weeks of the year. <laughs> Any preference in color? Oh, give me something snappy, bud. You got a green one with a red feather in the band? Oh, certainly, sir. Several of them. Very swanky, too. Now, here's our latest Alpine model. Green felt, welt brim, and two feathers, one on each side. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> if you could wiggle your ears, McGee, you could fly home in that hat. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you what, bud. Just put a stack of these Katie's on the counter here, and I'll try them on one at a time. Oh, certainly, sir. Now, here's an... Oh, here nice. you are. Full range of styles, sir. Well, now, let's see. There's so many of them here, I'm kind of confused. How about this fuzzy gray one, dearie? Oh, no, that's too shaggy. I'd be coming out of the barber shop with my hat parted in the middle. <laughs> oh, there, folks. Imagine meeting you here. Buying a hat, McGee? Who, me? Why, no, Gildersleeve. I come in here on a checkup survey for my cousin, Yehudi McGee. Yep. Yeah. He's my midget cousin, you know. Yep. Yes, and very prominent in the hat industry, too. A yeah. uh, midget? What does he do in the hat industry? He crawls into the hats and ties them little white bows in the back of the sweatband. <laughs> <laughs> Yehudi, eh? Well, that's very good, McGee. Yeah. Now, if you'll stand aside, I'd like to select a hat. Say, McGee was here first, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, I think there's room for both of these gentlemen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, if you think that, uh, you've never been in the same room very long with both these gentlemen. You can pick out a hat when I get through, Gildersleeve. I get first choice. Well, your choice would never be my choice anyway, McGee, so you go ahead. Don't worry, I will, and I'm going to take my own sweet time about it, too. Sure, why not? Well, What's an hour or so in buying it when you wear, wear them for seven years? Oh, he doesn't. He does not wear them for seven years. They look like that because he worries. Yes. <laughs> Here, dearie, try this one on. Okay. Oh, but I don't like the shape of that. Oh, that's one of our newest models, Mr. McGee. It's a pork pie. Uh, haven't you got one made out of rye crisp? His head is too fat now. <laughs> <laughs> now, you pipe down, Gildersleeve, or I'll take a feather out of one of these lids and knock you down with it. Why, you pedicuous little grunion. Who's up, onion? You get smart with me, and I'll scatter you around like a Sunday paper. Oh, now, 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 gentlemen. Uh, let's not have any acrimony. Why should they want acrimony? They're both still married. <laughs> they are? Well, congratulations, gentlemen. I hope you'll both be very happy. Oh! Now, let's see. Dad ratted Gildersleeve. Quit messing around with them hats. You're getting me all confused. I've got a right to look at them if I want to. How much is this hat, clerk? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve... Put that hat down, Gildersleeve. That's mine. It is not. It is, too. I laid it there when I started trying them on. Give me that hat. I will not. Wait a minute, McGee. I don't... Uh, never you... mind, Molly. I can handle this. Gildersleeve, if you don't let go of that hat, I'm going to skin you alive and use your hide to bind the first edition of For Whom the Bell Tolls. <laughs> Why, you pernicious little anemic. You couldn't skin a grapefruit without getting lost among the rest of the little squirts. <laughs> You let go of that. Oh, no, you don't. Good gentlemen, please, let me settle this for you. I can... Uh... You stay out of this. But I work here. Then quit. <laughs> Come on now, Gildersleeve. Give me you that You stop hat. it, McGee. You're going to tear that hat. Well, it's my hat. I can... Oh, dear. Oh. Now, look what you did. So one of you men will have to pay for that showcase. Oh. All right, McGee. But you haven't heard the end of this. Yeah. I'm going in to see the manager about this. Why, George, if a man can't buy a hat without some little... <laughs> Big cry, baby Molly. Listen to him. Well, I'll teach him he can't swipe my hat and get away with it. But, McGee, I don't... I'm think... sorry you had all this trouble, Mr. McGee. Now, let's get right down to business and select a hat that'll really... Ah, be... nothing doing, bud. I ain't buying any hats in a place that allows that stuff like that there to go on. Well, <laughs> I'll go, to, go right on wearing my old one. Where is my... Oh, here it is. Cost my stuff. Come on, Molly. All right, but... Come on, let's go. Well, anyway, I sure got a bargain in that suit, didn't I, Molly? Well, I don't know about the suit, McGee, <laughs> but you got a rare bargain in that hat. What you mean? You didn't have a hat on when you went in there. Awesome. Ribbon, Molly, will be back in just a moment. And now I'd like to offer a word of advice to everybody who has bought new linoleum this year or who intends to buy some soon. Wouldn't you like to know how experts advise caring for linoleum? Both linoleum manufacturers and housekeeping institutes advise strongly against scrubbing. 
Continuous scrubbing weakens the surface, causes it to crack and split and wear out before its time. The recommended way to protect your linoleum floors is with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. This easy-to-use floor polish protects linoleum against wear and scratches. Actually, makes linoleum last much longer. Glow coat gives a sparkling, long-lasting polish, preserves the beauty of the colors. And all this in addition to saving you hours of work because glow coat needs no rubbing or buffing. Simply apply and let dry. In 20 minutes, your floor is gleaming with new beauty. Will you take my advice? Just try Johnson's self-polishing glow coat once. Oh, McGee, yes. huh? look at all the lovely valentines in the spacer's window. Yeah, but I was going to get you a box of candy for Valentine's Day. You know, like I always do. Well, I don't know. Oh, you mean you don't want a box of candy? No, dearie, make it a valentine. Oh. You can't send me that and then eat it all yourself. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Marlowe Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Hello? Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. Fibber McGee and Molly have just gone off the air. Yes, next Tuesday again. Yes? Yes? Oh, well, I can answer that. The name of that new polish for automobiles is Johnson's Car New. It both cleans and wax polishes your car in one easy operation. You simply apply it to the finish after washing, let it dry to a white powder, wipe it off, and there's that showroom shine again. Remember the name, Johnson's Car New. C-A-R-N-U. Better try some. You're welcome. Goodbye. <laughs>